Okay. Welcome to Twinnies Chat Time. We're very excited to have the author of the upcoming book, Fufiema We Bote Keke Ilo. Bote needs you to know. Maria Alisi Tata Fuvea join us today to talk about this upcoming book. Um, Alisi, uh, we're, we welcome you to the chat time. And without further ado, I'm going to let you introduce yourselves to our listeners, uh, a little bit about your personal background first, and then we'll move on from there to your um, academic and professional background. Thank you very much, and thank you, um, Twinnies, and Anna and Paula, for having me um, this afternoon to um, into your chat time. Um, my name, as, as Anna mentioned, is Maria Alisi uh, Tatafubea, but um, uh, always called by Alice, my middle name, Alisi. Uh, I am originally from Tonga and <laughs> was born and raised in Tonga, um, in the island of Ewa in, um, in Tonga. And uh, yeah, I'm currently in New Zealand at the moment, uh, studying at the Victoria University of Wellington. And um, here I am with Twinnies, uh, hoping that my book, Okfu Fiamau e Bote will be released soon to support um, our audiences, especially children in Tonga. Maloana. Thank you, Alice. So um, it's good to hear uh, one of our uh, Tongan born authors uh, about to launch her first book, uh, particular mental awareness. So before we get into the book, can you uh, explain and share a little bit of information with our listeners and our viewers about your academic and professional uh, background as well, please? All right, thank you. Um, I was born in the island of Tongatapu and went to primary school um, at, at uh, Chibi Asangaha, Ewa, in the Ewa Island before I um, proceed to the high school level at uh, the main island, Tongatapu, at the Catholic school. Um, and shortly after that, I um, went to at the Nisi University um, while Professor Fudahel was uh, um, alive at the time. Um, so I did my first degree there, uh, Bachelor of Science in um, focusing in mathematics and biology uh, before I got a, uh, an opportunity to continue on for further studies uh, here in New Zealand for the first time um, uh, in about 10 years ago. Um, or 11 years ago, I'd say. So I came to New Zealand and did a Master's of Science in Cross-Cultural Psychology uh, before I then went back to Donga and practiced at, as a clinical psychologist at the psychiatric unit at Viola Hospital. So I was working um, closely with um, our only Tongan psychiatrist in Tonga, uh, Dr. Mapa Bloka at the Viola Hospital um, Psychiatric Unit uh, for a couple of years before I then uh, went on to Australia and, and did my clinical training, which is a Master's of Clinical Psychology at the Australian National University, um, before I went back again to Tonga and work, continue working at the Psychiatric Unit. Um, and here I am after a year, I then um, got this opportunity to continue on for further studies to do my uh, PhD here in Wellington. Uh, started off with the University of Otago and uh, will be finishing off from Victoria University, hopefully in the coming years. So um, that's uh, where I was as with my academic background. So I, I my first job really was a te was becoming a teacher at, at the Nisi High School while I was working there, and also a, a tutor at the university level. 
Um, and my second job really was uh, being a clinical psychologist. And um, I think as far as I remember, I was the, the first clinical psychologist to be working for the government of Tonga. Um, yeah, when, when I went back from my studies. Thank you, Anna. Well, we're very grateful for um, the opportunities you had as a Tongan student, and indeed to have institutions like Adenisi at the time provide you with the, of the platform to expand your, um, and expose you to this field that is somewhat, perhaps not a common field when we grew up in Tonga, we're quite used to, uh, the fields of arts and history and science and the basic ones. So indeed, we we do uh, applaud the establishments of such institutions. And it's good to see that more institutions at a third level tertiary are being established and continue to be established in Tonga to enlarge the horizons of the thoughts of our young secondary students nearing the end of the completion of the studies and about to embark. Um, because had we had known, uh, speaking from experience, that there are such other fields in the areas that the options are wider, uh, at a secondary level, younger school, perhaps um, our syllable back then could have been better catered to better give us a footing once you get into tertiary. But often once we get to secondary, we we have to do an additional year to just to get to the specific field. And in our areas of uh, um, attention or, or, or specialization. So it's good to, to hear about um, an, an appreciation back towards the institutions in Tonga, such as us at the Nice University, um, who provided this opportunity and what an asset you are for um, the history uh, of the academics of Tonga and also the, the profession of psychologists in Tonga and the, the health department by large. So um, Twinnies is quite excited to collaborate and join with you, Alisa, to bring about your work to um, a much bigger audience, I suppose, the diaspora here in Tonga, but also elsewhere. So with that being said, um, we're just gonna jump right straight into the book. Tell us a little bit, how long have you been contemplating to write a book? Thank you. Um, so because of the, of the clinical training that I went through while I was in Australia, it was the first time for me to really work closely with uh, children and parents throughout my clinical practicum. And it was during this time that I realized how important um, storytelling and um, reading books to children. And it was it, so uh, using the storybooks is one of the approaches. Uh, I'd say main approaches that we use when working with children. Um, so that's how clinicians really get on to uh, communicate with kids in, in the room. And, um, and we, as we all know that with the storybooks for children, it really uh, relay uh, some knowledge or concepts that is, it might be a bit difficult to explain with our language as adults, but can, you know, we can be incorporated through the, the language where it fits into the children and also uh, the pictures and the illustrations within it. So while, while working with children and, and parents, I knew that, um, uh, to be honest, at, the, at first, um, before I did my clinical training, I didn't really know that, you know, the storybooks really could be used in such a way to help uh, children's mental health, mm -hmm. especially with shaping their behaviors and um, their cognitions and, and makes them feel better, to really change the, their mood in some ways. So um, because that that has been used um, 
uh, in therapy. I, at the time, was hoping that in, in thinking one day I'll definitely going to write <laughs> some storybooks for, for children in the Tongan language. There are many books or storybooks in English that have been written by great authors around the world that we tend to choose from as clinicians and use it to relay the messages that we want to help the uh, to useful children within therapy. And, and so the way I was thinking of it, like how can Tongan children who don't really know how to speak in English and their parents who are currently in Tonga could benefit from such work. And um, so then I decided at the time that once I have the time, I'll definitely go to write some books in the Tongan language and hopefully it can be read by children and parents and uh, help them in the same way that we use the English ones to help the kids in therapy. So that's when I started <laughs> contemplating about writing storybooks, which I felt like that I am fortunate enough to um, accept how twinnies uh, really prioritize mental health in such a way that they chose my book to be published at this time of the year. So <laughs> thank you. Well, um, from our side, we we had not intended to do another book um, at the end of the year because we're only like we're in October now, November, December. So. Um, it's a busy time for us, and and I honestly didn't want to do another book. But uh, we had initially spoken in July, and then you came back to me uh, just this month, and I said, "Look, this the content of the book is far too important to prolong any further." And given the background of the book is specifically related to the volcanic eruption that happened this year and the tsunami immediately after, we had to make an effort to bring the book out about. So it, indeed from our side, there's no question about it. The content speaks for itself. Our platform is only a, a voicing platform. So like we had to get on board and support you, Alicia, to get the book out before the end of the year. Um, so this is our last book for the year, but. Going back to what you said, there's certainly a lot of content that I'd like to touch base before we go into the book. When you did your clinical psychology uh, work experience, was that here in Australia or in Tonga with Mapabuloka? Oh, that was in Australia. It was in Australia. Okay. Yes. And was it so, specific to an age group? So really the children that I uh, was work, work, working with as a part of my practicum was children under 12. Under so 12. the age varies from the age of uh, three at the time to age 12. Um, yeah, so uh, that's the age group that uh, I believe Australia is really um, having a special uh, service and support for such age group, uh, children under 12. And are you aware whether we have this sort of uh, um, clinical experiment platform in Tonga at the time being or, or, or not? I, I think that because psychology is still at its um, baby age in, in Tonga, that I, I cannot really say that there is something that is more specific um, to therapy in um in the use of um, uh, help and support to young children in Tonga. But I am aware that there are specific support that some groups in Tonga are providing to children, mm -hmm. and that would include, um, you know, those children are, who are being uh, sent to the hospital. There's a different ward there that they tend to provide support to help children who are being admitted there. I believe that with the doctors there who are a bit aware of some mental health uh, trainings, um, they, they could possibly be able to provide some mental health support while they're there. Um, but there are some uh, groups, uh, perhaps donor-driven in Tonga from the uh, Government of Australia, where they gather girls together and they do focus groups and, you know, just helping to support them throughout their journey in life. But really, there is none that I am aware of at the moment that is focusing specifically on 
the treatment and um, and providing intervention specific to the child and parents within a therapy session or, or you know, any um, specific therapeutic support or psychological support for children and their families. Um, the Ministry of Education, uh, I, I think it's, it's great to acknowledge too that they've been, I think they are the main or the primary supporter for children in Tonga, uh, especially with the work that they provide to um, those in primary schools. Um, and I, I know that it's more educational and they incorporate some mental support there, but uh, not quite explicit as how I know it so far. So, yeah. So hopefully, um, definitely a mission for endeavourment is at the end of the completion of your, of your studies and enough funding background, we would see this sort of service provided for our children and equally the parents as well in Tonga. Um, so indeed, a, an initiative for us to uh, put in in front of us to to endeavor to get to our resources and it's good to start somewhere and even if we get the books out is the point of start to raise awareness in any sort of way that in our language it's an acknowledgement that there is a need for it to be talked about in our own language that it does exist and that the reason it for us to accept that it does exist and, and therefore I need to address it. So with the book, we'll, we'll talk about the title next because I know when we picked the title, we had a few exchanges uh, regarding the title, um, but I'll let you talk about how we, we got to the title because you obviously did the Tongan translation and Twinnies is doing the, the English version. So please explain to our viewers and listeners um, how you came to pick the title and specifically the choices of words we both use for the final ending. Yes. Thank you. I think that, and I did <laughs> agree that we had to <laughs> uh, talk about how we're going to, you know, present the title in a way that could reflect what's really uh, inside the book. And, um, uh, but previously, uh, as I was thinking about writing the book, um, uh, because it's pretty specific to, um, help children who witness the volcanic eruption in Tonga. Um, initially, the, the thought was to write this book and uh, dedicate it to, the, to those who witnessed the volcanic eruption and the tsunami. And uh, because when the volcanic eruption happened, uh, I was in Tonga at the time, so I was a part of <laughs> what really happened in Tonga. And I have young children too. So um, my my ongoing converse, conversations and dialogue with my eldest daughter uh, really um, gave me uh, the idea of, of naming the book uh, with some phrases or any title that could include her name because the issues about children's mental health was really important, not just to me, but for her as well. So really the the, um, the title of uh, that really uh, was not how I, I managed to put in the title at first, as you know, Anna, when I, I think it was a different title that I brought in. I think I, I uh, but when we put our heads together on making it, uh, the title, um, become it came from knowing that that both the needs the children of Tonga who witnessed the volcanic eruption to know what's really inside the the book um there were a couple of conversations where we where we almost agreed on putting both the um was longing for, <laughs> for, for yeah for for you to know. But because to, the understanding of, of uh, children's cognition uh, at this age, uh, some children between the age of um, 
1 or 2 to 12, uh, their cognition or cognitive capability is not yet fully developed. Mm. And so when we have to uh, say that that what there is longing for, for people to know, it almost uh, gives us an idea that uh, what they see is already capable of um, wanting other people to know and that she is trying hard uh, to be heard, you know, <laughs> to be heard by others. But at this stage, like the book really tells a story about a pote that uh, just very confused and didn't really know what's going on and what the changes that happened to her after the event that happened in the story. So really the title, uh, we came to agree on the title that Bote needs you to know. It's because there is a need for the reader who's going to read the book uh, from Bote's perspective that uh, the reader should know about what's going on inside the book, whether from uh, what Bote, the main character, went through until the end, the story itself, I believe it's rich in its contents to um, really indicate that Bote really needs you who was going to read it to know all these. <laughs> yeah. um, it's yes. a, a great experience to have gone through for me as a publisher and a translator because I've not worked with a, um, a psychologist before to write a book and obviously uh, the end of what you hope to achieve with the target reader and you work backwards from there. So the choices of words are always significant because you wanna pick yeah. a word that accomplishes the outcome that you attempt to get to at the end of the book. Whereas us publishers and writers, we want to pick a, a book that's catchy and uh, um, a title that is catchy and we're limited by other things like the size of the book and and all those others so it was an interesting experience for me as the publisher slash author and translator to pull myself back and to think of different choices of words simpler choices of words and the like what you said the intention within a child between the ages of one and twelve they have not thought of the process up to that stage that they could sit silently and assume that everybody yes. around him or her would pick up on the signs, whereas this child has not the ability, the majority of them, to get to that stage. So, again, I've learned a bit of what <laughs> that transitional process just by working through the um, um the title of itself, and I must say at the beginning, it's certainly going to be a challenge for translating the book because um, I know every word picked for every line that you've written in Tongue, and I have to be more extra careful on the choices of words of English that I use to add to match that. <laughs> to bring it to yes. your thinking of a child, uh, that this is what in, intently the tribe yes. will think to themselves or when they are at that stage. So, yes. Um, yeah, I agree. Because we could easily have been, um, you know, choosing a very catchy sort of word to mm. use, which will definitely go into invite a lot of um, people to, to have their interest in the book. But, you know, considering the main character's uh, cognitive ability at this stage and providing it's a book that, you know, should perhaps help with psychological processes and stuff, I think that it's important to reveal the capability of the main character itself on the title um, yeah. <laughs> as if the, the main character was not a child. Uh, we can say that, that she's longing for... For, to be hurt uh, because other peoples are just ignoring them. But I believe that it's not simply ignoring or ign ignorant that uh, surrounding, that the people from the surrounding are currently on. It's just either a lack of knowledge or understanding of what the changes are. Perhaps there is a bit of ignorant um, at that stage from from the people who are surrounding the child 
but I, I think I, I told, I believe that because the child does not have the capability to explain and express how he or she feels at this age, then, um, you know, all those behaviors are manifesting, uh, you know, all those uh, cognitions or emotions that the child has are manifested through their behavior. And it could be interpreted uh, in, a, in a different way by adults or people surrounding the child. So uh, really the title and the story, uh, I was trying, uh, hopefully, that uh, the outcome will, be, will come as how we were hoping. But the intention is to hopefully, you know, tell a story uh, to express how this child does not really have a choice or does not know what to do at this stage. But then us as adults should know and should become aware that these changes could explain what the child needs. So without the child having to explain, uh, because it's, uh, yeah, she's not capable of doing that at that age. <laughs> I know. Um, so, moving to the plot of the book, Bote, uh, and like you mentioned before, you and your children were in Tonga at the time of the eruption. If you could just provide our, our listeners and our viewers a bit of a, a plot summary of the book, perhaps, um, to what you feel comfortable they should know at this stage without giving too much of the book out, please. Yes. Um, so uh, going back to how I, I thought about putting together the book, uh, the in intention was really to dedicate a book to those who witnessed the volcanic eruption and the tsunami because I knew from experience and while I was there in Tonga that it was perhaps the most uh, challenging event or traumatic event that ever happened in Tonga whereby all these children, young children really witnessed. And so I, um, I started thinking about writing the book in a way that more closely related to the event, but, but in a way that will shape the way um, children feels or think about, you know, such traumatic events. So not only... Um, that the book is not explicitly expressing everything about what happened in the volcanic eruption. It's kind of touch on it, of, of one aspect of, of the volcanic eruption, but the story is about how the child went through such traumatic event up to a stage where like uh, people around him does not notice the changes that happened and then uh, went on until this, uh, this support. And so it would be really nice for, for the reader to notice when, when did the support uh, came in uh, and who really provided the support, um, who did not really understand what happened. And uh, I guess that the most important message that the story uh, was trying to express was at the end of the story where you know, the, the, when, when the story started off uh, with a sort of negative uh, scene, that at the end of the story, it ended with something really um, expressing how support provided really helped, uh, expressing the importance of uh, mental health and psychological support, which ended up um, helping this main character of Bote uh, throughout this journey that the story talked about. So really, um, I believe that uh, uh, for the reader, it's up for the reader to read it out and um, see how they think. But yeah. uh, that was the intention of writing the story, is to lead the reader or through a journey that this person went through and uh, what other changes that happened and what happened when there was a support provided. So, yeah, I think that's what, as much as I could share <laughs> without having to give away the whole story. <laughs> yes, they would have to buy a copy of the book to be able to read the, the details of the book for sure. Um, <laughs> now, moving on uh, to the cover of the book, did you want to explain us a little bit? Because it is quite a personal, what they herself painted the cover of the book. Yes. 
So, uh, yeah, again, to mention, so Bote is my daughter's uh, name. Uh, she's my eldest daughter. Uh, she was 13 at the time uh, when the volcanic eruption happened. Uh, she was not only like she was a little bit older than than children um, uh, under 12 and those who were 12 years old so she had a bit of uh, understanding about you know how or in that this sort of uh, feeling uh, empathic about younger children who were under 12 because her uh, younger siblings uh, were very afraid after the um, volcanic eruption um, it 13, my pote was able to uh, cope uh, with whatever uh, the whatever happened after the volcanic eruption. I didn't really have to help her through, but she managed to use up her skills uh, to, you know, face and, and cope with the with what happened. So Pote did uh, what she did mainly after the following the volcanic eruption, she did a lot of painting. So that's her hobby um, that she loves to paint. And the the cover of this book is Pote's ever first painting that she did after the volcanic eruption happened. I didn't tell him what content to do. It was her own um, idea of drawing it up and then of, of painting it. And then she presented it to me. I was pretty much shocked <laughs> after looking at it. And I said, uh, that's a brilliant idea. But I think that when she started talking about that, this is like what I've been thinking about, you know, the volcanic eruption, uh, it really, uh, gave me uh, a lot of uh, thinking about what they is now cognitively able to think of ways to express her emotions through her art or painting. And uh, I think to use her very first painting where she used to express her emotions right after the volcanic eruption in the cover of this book, I think it's really the uh, best fit for it because that really helped her to cope. Um, and um, and really the picture it, itself speaks of what really happened when she actually saw uh, the volcanic eruption from the main island um, at the Wuna Road to where the eruption happened. Yes. yes. So that's that's how the cover <laughs> was chosen. Oh, and really? I think with, with you as well, Anna, yes. uh, <laughs> as the publisher, Thinking yeah. that it's that it's best to use that as the cover photo, I think that uh, very much uh, speaks from, you know, Pote's uh, story. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Well, when we started talking, you had not. To, I asked you please send me the full transcript so I can have a read at it. And at the bottom of the transcript, after your bio, um, was the copy of the painting. Um, and then we were talking about the cover. We obviously have, have our own internal team that does the cover design. And then um, still then when I had the full transcript with the paintings, my mind had not gotten to the point to look at the painting per painting and look at what an impact it would be to use it. And then when you suggested, oh, would you consider using that as the cover? and, and and you told me Bote did it. And I said, my goodness, what could be a better cover for the book than what she's drawn? Like, that's an attention draw already. There could not have been a better statement of a, um, a cover for the book and the content itself than what she had drawn. So, um, Thank Bote for me. <laughs> for <laughs> to ask I think we should, yeah. we should both be thanking her. <laughs> on designing a cover for the book. Um, <laughs> she made it a lot easier for us rather than designing it. It was a matter of just putting a title there and using her cover. And she <laughs> you forwarded to me at a later time other paintings she had done of the same scenario, but maybe different different in terms of colors and, and topography. And, and we're considering adding those as well, because I think they do tell a certain shade of the experience she had gone through. And, and it 
finishes the story at a certain level that, you know, it would have been different if we had drawn it. And I was talking to my illustrator and it's a different illustrator for this book that we've, we haven't used before earlier this week. And um, I, I had said to her that based on the content, I'd probably be looking at four or five illustrations for the book because I wanted to add her paintings at the back of the book um, to add to the content because I think that would add value to the book in itself. Uh, so um, like I said before, I do thank Bote for us um, <laughs> for making those lovely paintings it would be added to the book and we we anticipate that a lot of our readers will be very grateful to see the fine work of such a young child at the age of 13 be brought about in such a colorful and um, therapeutic way for children. Yeah. And I've seen other projects in Tonga attempt to do so like the Dalita project, Vanessa Aleta is doing where a lot of coloring pencils uh, given to the young age group at a hall and, and were encouraged to draw different pictures at the aftermath of the both the volcanic and the tsunami, which I thought at the time was a great and excellent way to get the children to bring about these emotions. And I had we have already taken on board discussing this with the project in Tonga and said, look, we're doing this project with you the book and it talks about this, if they could look at source in some of the books for the same young children, they had given the, the, the blank page, if you like, and then rather a blank page for them to just think about this time, it'll have a specific content, um, guiding them, if you like, if they read the, the, the lines one by one, it'll, rather than going through 10 different roads, your writing has sort of narrowed one, 10 roads to one or two, and they'll be headed towards one targeted end road of where we have different service providers providing the, the help, if you want it, the professional help. So we're, we're having that on dialogue um, with the existing providers of wow, ongoing right. resources in Tonga, to see how they can also tap into this forthcoming book. So moving on then to the translations, we touched on it already before, but please, I leave it to you again. Um, <laughs> you did the, the, the two translations of the book and why we have chosen to do both, please, Alice. Okay, great. Uh, first of all, uh, there are children in Tonga who are being taught in the lang English language. Uh, so, but there, there were children in Tonga who were not just, um, you know, children who read in Tongan, but there are children also who could only read in English. So, to make this book. Uh, benefit for for all the children who went through the the traumatic event we have to have them in both language and i believe that it would be unfair for for to just provide the book in the tongan translation because then um tongan kids who are going to the government primary school will benefit from reading it um their parents but because they were not the only ones who were in Tonga during the time. So that was the, the first idea of thinking about making the book uh, bilingual in its um, uh, sense. So the second um, reason was that we know that uh, the content of the book uh, could not only just benefit those who witnessed the volcanic eruption, but both this situation in the book is something that um, is common across children who experience um, some mental health issues early on in life. Um, so I, it's, I believe that, you know, with an English translation of it, uh, so even some Tongan children overseas or whoever will be coming across the book 
will still take away some messages from the book that will be helpful for their mental health. So obviously it's not just Tongan children that we are looking at. We're looking at all children who um, who might come across the book and will be able to understand and take away or even their families. So uh, as we are making the book available, uh, from Australia and online um, from your side, Anna, I believe that, you know, we should make it uh, in both languages so that even those children who are speaking in English and read in English, they could have a Tongan version of the English version so they can both uh, get access to both and perhaps uh, know how to read the book in Tongan as well. They could learn about how such... Um, approaches or or emotions that are mentioned within the book are being translated into Tongan. So uh, there, there's a lot of benefit that, that um, audiences or readers will get out of the book when it's both available in English and Tongan. And because I found out that Twinnies could do translation as well, and with your previous work on the translation of the books that you published before, um, I it just made me feel like that you'll be the best uh, translator to work through the the book. And so, with um, as I mentioned, uh, the the approach that we took on when we worked through the title, uh, I believe that we're definitely going to be working together <laughs> on making sure that the book will be presentable and um, interpretable, and being able and will translate the messages and translate the messages that we are hoping for in both languages to our families and children, whether overseas or in Tonga. Anna, I think you mute your microphone. Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let me repeat that one more. Um, two things I wanted to say from a publisher and a translator and also the, the illustration part of the book when translating. In terms of format and structure, like all of our books, the first part of the book will be the tone translation. Following in suit will be the... English separate. So in one um, book, you'd have both translation, but separated. So you have effectively, you'd be getting two versions of the book. Second is the, um, the illustration. When I was talking to the illustrator earlier on, uh, when I had indicated that I only wanted a few, and the reason is because I did not want the illustration to take um, over the wording of the book because I feel um, some books are better illustrated to tell the book, the storyline, and some books, the words needs to bring. So, um, with that being said, I felt that the, the content of this book, your writings, the messages are paramount to be the number one priority or point of thought for both the readers, despite whatever the end age reader who reads it. And then in addition to facilitate the thought process of a comprehension of the principle, would be the illustrations plus the painting because when you publish a book, you decide whether you want an illustration, particularly a children's book, we often add on illustration to tell more of the book so the kids could just visualize it. But with yours, I feel the the language is simple enough for the child to to read in both languages. 
and equally the message should be and the illustration part should take a second if you like um, and for the message so that's how we've structured the the book in with this forthcoming book in terms of illustration now moving on to the additional resources policy that we've decided um to be released together with this book I'm going to let you um, inform our viewers and our listeners what the additional resource that we've picked to be released together with this book. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Um, so with the book, we decided that it would be great to add some additional um, um, component into it that could help to perhaps reinforce uh, an aspect of the book um, because from my understanding as a, a psychologist who's been working with children um, it's really important uh, to teach our children about their feelings and their emotions because oftentimes um, you know, as Tongans, we're sometimes, and I wouldn't say oh, always, uh, sometimes we tend to um, suppress uh, our emotions in many ways. And and that's probably like whether uh, that's the how we were brought up or that's cultural, like, uh, but most of the time uh, it can be hard to really name uh, the emotions that we have in many ways. So, for example, um, some children might be asked about, um, you know, to identify whether that person is happy or sad or angry or confused. Or some kids, they do really well, but some, they don't really differentiate one type of emotion from another. And that can be uh, an issue when working with children if they're unable to identify how others are expressing their emotions towards them and even to understand how they can even express their emotions themselves. So we thought that would be a really good idea to uh, provide some <laughs> extra uh, materials along with the book um, in, in a way that uh, both they wants uh, the kids who will be reading the book to know about emotions, to know about how they feel, because one aspect of the book is looking at uh, really mentioning uh, how both they was a bit, uh, you know, reluctant to. Uh, was a bit confused, I'd say, to understand what's going on. Um, and uh, from a psychological perspective, if, you, if you're the reader looking at it from a psychological perspective, you really understand what really happened. It's because that child is feeling this way, is having this particular emotion. But because the child experienced that emotion herself, that that's what making her confused and doesn't really know what type of emotion that she actually has. And that can easily led on to uh, triggering some behaviors that are perhaps not socially desirable to, to those who are around the child. And so I think that the best uh, material to pro provide along as an extra for the, for the book is a stack of cards that we'll be uh, naming it as, um, as an emotions cards. Uh, emotions cards are used uh, very much by psychologists as well. We're working with children in helping children to identify their emotions. And so uh, with uh, the cards alongside the book, it can help the reader or whoever's reading through it to help starting to teach children about how, how to identify their own emotions. So the idea is that um, the psychologist is not there with you to teach you emotions specifically in this uh, therapeutic setting, but it's something that all of us parents and all of us uh, who will be, who are working with children that we should be equipped with to understand that our children do not have the, the potential to understand and to name their own emotions um, sometimes or most of the time. And so it is our role, it is our collective role as uh, caregivers, uh, especially around this time, 
COVID time, let alone the volcanic eruption that happened in Tonga, to help our children understand their emotions and notice it not only for themselves, but also to notice it in people around them. Uh, that can help them to facilitate their communication and, and getting support for them. And hopefully, like, that can help them to put in words their own emotions that can help other people to support them in, in a more, in a better way than just expressing it through behaviours, um, anger and all those uh, other manifestations of behavior, but perhaps, you know, putting those emotions into language could help carers to support them in the way that they deserve. So that's the uh, bonus of, <laughs> of, of uh, the book is that we're not only uh, writing the book and providing it uh, as a book itself, but we are also accompanying it with uh, emotions cards that will be both available in Tongan and in, in English. Um, and uh, yeah, so that that's uh, the the additional one that we're going to add on to our book, uh, Anna. Well, you, I I think it's a fantastic idea, and so far we we we. I'm going to call it what is needs you to know emotion cards um, and um, it will be provided separately to the book it does not come with the book but um, the book by the way will will um, go up for pre-ordering this Saturday and for those who will be pre-ordering you'll get a copy of the emotions cards for free uh and for those who will order once the book is released on um the first week of november you'll have to pay for it separately so those are uh, the resources that we'll be bringing out now talking about the available resources we also discussed initial um platforms that we will be giving um donating a number of the books too. So again, Alisa, I leave that uh, to you to, <laughs> to, I mean, I, on behalf of Greenies, I've told you what we, um, we will be giving to Tonga and I'll, I'll let you talk about the details for our listeners and viewers, please. Okay, great. I think that uh, because my initial thought um, as I discussed with uh, Twinnies at the beginning of um, of this journey uh, for the publication of the book, uh, we initially uh, spoke about the who is the audience that will benefit from the book. And uh, because we both identified that the book uh, will be dedicated for, for um for children who witnessed the volcanic eruption in Tonga, uh, it made sense uh, to us that uh, we can't just launch the book without uh, having to send some books for those children. And I think that I'm just so thankful and fortunate enough to acknowledge that the Twinnies are happy to provide their own donation for public for printing the books and and donating it to uh, certain uh, ministries in Tonga, but at the same time, our hope um, once the book is uh, perhaps the pre-ordering uh, will be announced uh, this Saturday, as Anna mentioned, uh, the. All the purchases that will be um, that we'll get from from then on will help us to print more of the books to donate to Tonga. So it will be lovely to um, to if you if you could then perhaps uh, share the link and uh, talk to people around your families and friends and. Uh, we're also looking at potential donors as well who could help us in this project to make sure that the book is not only available online for people who can just buy it, but we can also have a chance to print more of the copies and send them to Tonga, especially to the schools where uh, they were affected by the uh, volcanic eruption 
and uh, and also uh, children who really need support in the hospital as well. I uh, I'll give this chance to Anna. Uh, Anna might want to say something in addition to that, but um, that that's what I I'm very grateful for is that uh, at the end of the day we know that uh, what we're working on for the propagation of the book will not only help those who will be buying it, but also the proceedings will go towards printing extra books to send to uh, those in Tonga that we are hoping the books will get onto and their families as well. Um, maybe that's what I remember at the moment, Anna. That, that should suffice. From, from the Greenie side, um, this is our contribution for the end of this year which marks our, our, our third year in operation. This is our third year in business at the end of the year. So rather than celebrating in any other manner, um, this is uh, our way of celebrating our third year in operation is we will be uh, um, donating um, books to the Children's Hospital and another 100 books to uh, the children in the relocated uh, areas in islands for uh, um, to remain available to them. And as we discussed, we will also look at um, printing additional copies once we get a, a little bit more of an up demand from the end users to other children, because I'm sure there are far more uh, quantities of children that would benefit from having and getting access to these books, equally the caregivers, not just the children, but the caregivers. And um, it, it, it's a no-brainer for those of us who are making the book to put our hands uh, forward to, to make the book and make them available to the people in need, because there's no point printing them and leaving them in our shelves and not getting the, uh, building a bridge, if you like, for the kids to have access to it. And applying for funding, as we all know, will take a bit of time. And it might not come this financial year. For donors, it'll probably hit into the next financial years. So whatever way we can put our heads together to facilitate um, as many of the children that we could get the book across to by this Christmas, um, the better it is for us to have uh, initiated this book and to finish off our year with uh, as a final product to mark. Yes, this tragedy happened to us the year, but we are recovering and we are actively as a country, whether in Tonga or worldwide, and we've seen such a reaction from all of our countries worldwide, which um, we are most grateful for, to bring about assistance. And this is just a drop in the rain of what we are able to put forward. And to utilize your expertise in that is, is no small accomplishment. So we're happy to have And for those of you who are listening, who would like to facilitate, like I said, the link for the pre-order of the book will go up this Saturday morning on our website and um, you could go right ahead and pre-order a copy of the book from then. Last, Alice, what is your plan for the future? Any next series coming on after this book? So, because I'm currently in New Zealand and um, very much the area that my uh, research is focusing on is on parents and children. So um, most of what I've gathered from my studies um, so far uh, really opens my eyes about um, the way we parent our children in Tonga and how children are being brought up in Tonga. So really it's an area not only um, as a psychologist but as a researcher as well to utilise the, the knowledge and evidence that I've got so far from, from uh, my studies about uh, Tongan parenting and Tongan children in Tonga. I have now, since we are starting now to uh, with this first book, 
Uh, I believe that this will be the beginning. Um, in the coming uh, months or, or years, I believe that this is the area that I'm very much interested in, uh, working to help um, Tongan parents and their children. And so there'll be more books to come and more uh, extra materials as well that I believe that uh, should be, um, get, that could be reached by, by our Tongan parents in Tonga uh, that I believe most uh, parents overseas are getting access to, uh, that they get to read about and know about in real life, but our parents in Tonga are not really getting access to at the moment. So um, I understand that twinnies are very much um, interested in, in supporting children's mental health. And uh, to be honest, I'm very uh, fortunate to have such support from Anna and twinnies. And uh, it takes... Uh, people who have the heart, uh, a big heart, I would say, to, you know, come forward and, and support the future of our, our Tongan society. And I know with money, it can be really hard, um, uh, be very difficult to get things going uh, due to the economic um, state that we are currently in. But with you, Anna, and Twinnies, um keen to support a such project in writing books and sharing uh, supportive materials with our Tongan parents. I think I, I shouldn't say no to such, um, uh, you know, <laughs> openness for, for further uh, collaborations in the future for, for publishing more books. So, um, yes, this is the beginning. The next one will be focusing on different mental health issues. There's so many that we could write about in simpler words and terms that we could then perhaps uh, relay the, the importance of such issues and concepts in psychology that have never really been read by our parents in Tonga to hopefully help them support uh, the future of our Tongan society. And also hopefully, like, because uh, what I, I had in mind, Anna, was that I grew up uh, in Tonga as a Tongan, raised as a Tongan, but I was very much supported in terms of my academic uh, journey by the government of New Zealand and Australia. And, uh, you know, with the opportunities that they provided, I believe that it's probably about time to utilise uh, the, the skills and knowledge that they have helped uh, to build throughout the past years. Uh, to benefit our people. And with your support, it makes me feel like I'm very close uh, to Australia, <laughs> where they helped me uh, with my clinical training. And, um, you know, with being in, in New Zealand, it really uh, helps me to place myself in a position where I am uh, a part of New Zealand, hoping to um, help Tonga and support our Tongan parents in many ways. So really, this is a coordinated effort between New Zealand, Tonga and Australia uh, in this project. Uh, so without Tonga and Australia, Anna, I wouldn't be able to to get such skills and knowledge to this stage that I that makes me very much willing to help and give back uh, to Tonga. So um, I think that's that's it from my side. This is the beginning of uh, the book that I will be writing for our uh, children in Tonga, as well as as everyone who's working around children. Yeah. And as I said, one of the big challenges is providing learning resources and consistency. Uh, 
Okay. So I was just saying that um, we're very proud to be a part of this initiative to bring that following series to the books. Because as I said when we first discussed that, um, is that consistency is the biggest issue. And it's important for us to make sure that these resources are available at long term. So we are backing you up for 100% and we intend to do so for as long as you can utilize your skills and there's plenty of content. I think we brought about and we bring to that to be made available. So with that being said, That being said, is there anything else you'd like to add on? At least we're now at the near the end of our um, discussion. I think we are on mute. <laughs> I think the connection is a bit tricky towards the end of our our session, but I think uh, I hopefully uh, think that the, the first part of our session. Um, could be viewed uh, well by our audiences today. I think I'd just like to thank uh, Twinnies for for making mental health or children's mental health um, a priority during this time of the year. As we're getting towards the end of the year, uh, getting towards Christmas, I can't believe that I'm looking back. Uh, it was just... January this year when we um, had the volcanic eruption in Tonga and now we are almost at the end of the year and uh, I've always wondered at the same time uh, with my my daughter Bote thinking about how uh, those young children in Tonga have been in the past couple of uh, months because uh, oftentimes after a month of um, of you know experiencing such traumatic events such as the volcanic eruption if there's no available support for children um then and whether the children experience a lot of the signs that are uh, mentioned in the book um then it it will be a bit difficult to help them to recover uh from from now on because it's been about uh, more than five months now since the eruption happened. And so hopefully that, uh, that our work is not a little bit too late for, for the support that we provide. But, um, you know, hopefully it can help. If, if it doesn't help as much as we're hoping for, uh, then perhaps it can spark some new knowledge. And, uh, and thoughts in those who will be reading it in a way that could help them to support their children or the Tongan children or even children at school, um, at the church or communities. Uh, hopefully the, the book can help to start off some ideas for, for continuing to support our children and, and usually you know, the way we, we think of our children in Tonga uh, is that they are the future of our Tongan society and what better way that we could do to support our children than doing it now. Whatever can, we can do, we should be doing it now. Uh, if we keep delaying it, it might not be, you know, it, we might not come up with uh, a better way to supporting them. Um, I think the last uh, thing that I want to uh, acknowledge as well is, uh, you know, sometimes uh, psychologists, they, they tend to forget that uh, there are people there who have been supporting our children in Tonga. I might have forgotten uh, that there are parents, that there are church leaders, and that there are the, the people in the Ministry of Health, uh, of health and, and Education who've been working so hard to support uh, children. Uh, with this book, I believe that it's not a replacement of 
of psychotherapy or working with children, I believe it's a book that can help uh, to facilitate knowledge and uh, reinforce our knowledge regarding uh, what, what what's happening to our children after they witness any traumatic event. It's not just a volcanic eruption, even just a loss of a loved one. Um, we are there and it's our collective effort to try and support them as much as we could. And I think the most important thing is to give them our time uh, and listen and, um, you know, become aware of what changes that are happening in their lives. And hopefully this book will not just be seen as a therapeutic material. <laughs> Some people might look at it and think, no, I'm not going to read that because I'm not <laughs> having those issues or my child is not experiencing that. That was not the point of the book. We're just hoping that anyone could read the book because at some point in our lives, we're going to come across, um, you know, dealing with children and having children around us, perhaps our gainga and our family, our cousins. And uh, the, the one um, aspect from the book uh, you could perhaps remember, and that could even uh, facilitate your hope and um, your actions to support uh, any children. So, yeah, thank you for those who have been supporting our children in Tonga after the volcanic eruption. Um, hopefully the book will help a little bit more and also our upcoming projects as well that we have, we've already talk, spoke about, uh, Anna, for the future. Yes. Well, I think we'll try and end it soon because the connection increasingly is starting to deter as we end it. I think there's <laughs> the universe is saying to us enough. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> Enough, let them um, read the book. <laughs> I know. We're, we're failing to read the signs as we're trying. But we've been taking note of the sign as well. So it's, it's saying to us, Enough, we've heard enough of your voices. Um, but just to end it, we thank you to Paula Moimoy for always putting up the content. And when I told him that the title of this book was Mental Awareness. He was more than um, happy to jump on board and live stream this for us on his uh, on his scene. So, hola malo al pito. And uh, for those of you who would like to support the book to get it out to as many kids as possible, the link for the pre-order will be available on our website this coming Saturday. Um, but if you would like to do so prior to that, please get in contact with Alicia or myself. For those of you who intended to order in bulk, we would talk to you to see the best way because the more we could get out there, the better it is for all of us. So without um, anything else to say, for my Lord Alicia for the available time and to all our viewers and listeners and Please get on and support and um, share the link of the available resources uh, for pre-ordering this coming Saturday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Malo Pito.